and welcome to The Living Room. I'm your host, Shanna Van Ness. Health and wellness is a huge topic within our community. Some people consider it important and others just don't. However, today I'm here to tell you that your health and wellness is extremely important. Currently, I'm experiencing a health and wellness um, challenge in that my mom uh, has been in the hospital now for about 15 days. My mom is a diabetic and also suffers from high blood pressure. She also doesn't eat well. So today's guest is Brent Faison, health and wellness expert and personal fitness trainer. He'll give us some insight and tips on how we can gain control of our life, our health and well-being through healthy eating choices, as well as incorporating a fitness plan within our daily life. The Living Room is a space where we engage in positive dialogue, all to provide positive change to build a greater civic community, from education to health to wellness to even issues on social justice. We not only talk about issues, but it's a space and forum where issues meet solutions. Welcome to the living room. Who's your who's who community leader of the week? Today's special guest in the living room is Brent Faison. So, Brent, welcome to The Living Room. Thank you for having me. Yes, and I'm so happy you're here because, um, as you know, I am currently going through um, a family experience with my mom, who's been in the hospital now for 15 days. And um, my mom hasn't been focused on her health and wellness. She um, is a diabetic. She suffers from high blood pressure, and um, she's not the most active um, individual. And um, I coin you a, as a health and wellness expert and fitness trainer, which you are, I've experienced it. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, when, when speaking to individuals about their health and wellness, um, what, what are some of the key, I guess, aspects to, for someone to really focus on this full body or total body health and well-being? Where would you tell someone to like start? Well, first it depends on my relationship with the person. Mm -hmm. um, there's a big difference in someone, say, that I'm close to, that mm -hmm. I'm concerned about, and then someone who has actually come to me for a service. Okay. So the, the approaches would be very different. For instance, like if someone comes to me for a service, and especially if they've already hired me and they know what they're getting, it is my responsibility to be as straightforward as possible. Mm -hmm. And within that, you know, tailor the message so the person can hear it. Okay. However, um, I'll be completely honest with you, I find it way more difficult to deal with people on a personal level because there are so many different attachments that people put mm -hmm. to the words or the message that you're trying to convey to them many mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. Especially when it's um, family or you know someone who knows you more than just in a coworker type right. atmosphere. So you know that's a kind of a difficult question to answer. Am I? Okay. <laughs> well, so so let me give you some of my my experience. Okay. Like right now, even um, dealing with my mom. Right. So mom is a diabetic high blood pressure. She knows she's supposed to eat healthy food and make different decisions and have different behaviors uh, surrounding her food choices. Um, she's asking for fried chicken, right? And, um, you know, in the African American community, as we know, um, a lot of us tend to suffer from uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, and a whole host of other um, diseases that impact our health and well-being. Um, what advice would you give me to support her in in her healthy food choices um, at this point? And then um, also at some point, she's going to come out the hospital and go through this rehabilitation phase where she also needs to focus on her physical well-being. 
So, so what advice would you give to someone like me? So in a, in a parent relationship, I find that many times it's really just making it very clear mm -hmm. as the child and yet an adult, what you are and what you are not standing for. Mm -hmm. So while you can't force a mother to do anything she doesn't want to do, you can be a stand mm -hmm. for the bigger picture, right? Mm -hmm. So that could mean like, you know, if she's asking you to contribute to things that are not necessarily supportive to her health, or respectful, I'm, I'm not willing to do that. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, providing a really loving atmosphere and making those choices available. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times what I found with people and their, when they're dealing with their family is if they can somehow convert what is seen as work mm -hmm. into something that's fun and family oriented. So like for instance, if you're wanting your mother to get out and get more exercise, you know, have a family walk or do an activity that is going to de demand some type of physical activity mm -hmm. and slowly increase it that way. Okay. And meals, you having family meals, like mom, we're having family dinner and have it like be something that's supportive of our health. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think there's a, it's a process of integrating a lifestyle by example. Okay. Many times, especially if you're close to your family and from what I understand, you're very close to your mother. Yeah. So that's a benefit to you. Right, got it, got it. Now, when it comes to um, physical fitness and, and physical well-being, um, how important is mental well-being and spiritual well-being to um, apply to your overall physical fitness? So I'm glad that you asked that question. My belief is um, where many people trip themselves up is they try to compartmentalize uh, wellness, mm -hmm. right? So. The conversation many times turns into what can I do physically to create a particular result mm -hmm. and really not being clear about and my philosophy is how you do one thing is how you do everything mm -hmm. so with that if, if you're looking to create wellness in your life let's just have an energy of wellness so that would mean doing something that is going to support every aspect of the whole so, and many people that I work with don't necessarily believe in spirit or believe in the soul or anything, mm -hmm. any type of religious dogma that's attached to things like that. So I just, I say um, emotional life because everyone can conceive that we have emotions. And many times emotions are the pathway into being clear about what's going on with us spiritually, right? Right. right. So within that, a program that addresses all of those things in a very intentful type of way mm -hmm. is what I recommend. And I say that. And I don't want to go too deep into the rabbit no, hole here, but there's a, we're programming ourselves whether we're intentional about it or not. Okay. So the goal is to really be intentional about everything that we do on mm -hmm. those three levels, if, mm -hmm. if, if that's where we're working from. So for instance, that would include, include some type of meditation or something that really uh, relieves stress on a mental and emotional level Okay. accompanied by the exercise. Got it. Got it. So, so with that being said, it would be um, a step into, let's say, your your gym or your your program, and in order for my physical to be aligned appropriately and to gain the results that I'm seeking, um, I should start with uh, mental clearing meditation, right? right? To then focus on the physical aspects of my workout. Exactly. So the, what I found with many people is, so we have these three levels. We have the mental, the spiritual, and the physical. Mm -hmm. And different people have different levels of resistance to each. Okay. So I find that there are many people, um, so for, for instance, like a lot of people that I deal with that I do one-on-one -on -one with, I tend to attract people that are very eight type personality. Okay. All right. So they're very results driven mm -hmm. and many times not connected to their emotions. All right. So All right. There, the work that I do sometimes really... Uh, breaking down or pen penetrating that resistance mm -hmm. going in the easiest way possible which is the physical for some people okay or some people it's the mental because some people are very cerebral right and so penetrating that to get to the other spots mm -hmm. is really the work and like I said that it kind of gets very very deep mm -hmm. but overall I would suggest people you know whether you're working with somebody or not don't necessarily be attached to what it looks like because some people have a problem with sitting down for five minutes in the beginning and it, it's because their minds are everywhere. Right. Right? So that can create a huge amount of frustration for mm -hmm. them to try and say, well, I'm going to meditate. And then 
the result is they feel like a failure. Right. So meditation can be sitting down listening to some, some comforting music and mm -hmm. just doing something. You know, you, you, you find what works for you, but the point at the end of the day for mental clarity is to mm -hmm. really just be still right. and be quiet right. and just allow yourself to be. Right. 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 So yeah, it looks it looks different to everybody. Right. I smile when you say that because um, it took me some time to get into meditating. Um, for me personally, I've always felt like I had to do something, right? And um, when I started to adopt meditation into my life daily, and just the stillness and um, being still and getting in touch with mind, body, soul, um, it cleared a lot for me. And in that clearing, it really allowed me to jump into uh, what was next. But whatever I was jumping into, whether it was uh, running or, you know, even ready to start my day, it was done from a space of where I was already clear because I got in touch with myself. So, no, absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. There's, um... When you're able to, to 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 create connectivity, right? Mm -hmm. um, my experience and what ha the feedback has been that there is a different level of connectivity and everything else. So, for instance, um, you become much more aware of things that you never thought of before, right? Whether that's um, emotional or physical, and mm -hmm. you feel them deeper. So, some you know, like you have people who work out quite often, mm -hmm. and they find that their results are minimal, and they get frustrated. Right. The minute that they're able to really connect with what it is that they're doing when they're doing it, and, and I always tell people, when you, like when you're working out, mm -hmm. like you want to be in full acceptance of what it is that you are doing to your body. Okay. So that could look like many things, but for, for example, I'll say, you know, people who are like, I hate to work out, or, you know, when they're getting ready to maybe do a new set mm -hmm. in a class or something, and the energy is like, oh, you know, there's an energy around there that is resistance to what you're, right. what you're voluntarily taking on. Mm -hmm. Once you're able to shift that energy and really connect to what it is you're doing and why you're doing it, the results look totally different. So then we're talking about something very different than the science of, right. uh, you know, kinesiology or whatever, you know, right, the, the technical right. terms that you want to put on right. it. So absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So now, um, when you work with people, you know, right, um, doing fitness and all that stuff, is meditation something you actually incorporate into that fitness program? And if so, um, what are the benefits? Like, have you seen people transform um, from adding meditation to the fitness routine? So, okay, so the way I work with groups is quite different than I do one-on-one -on -one work. Okay. Um, and so I'm open to the possibility. However, my experience has been that you, um, there's a there's a limitation of resources for you to be able to give your complete self to everyone in the class right. when you have a class with people. Okay. So you really just do your best with the technical aspect. You, you give the instruction, mm -hmm. you give the encouragement, and ultimately it's up to the people in the class to say, I'm going to be all in or not. Mm -hmm. Versus where I do one-on-one -on -one work with people and, um, one of my gifts is to, is, is to be able to be connected to people. I have, um, I'm very intuitive okay. as to what's going on with the people that I work with. Okay. And so many times, you know, being clear whether a person is invested or not, mm -hmm. I believe in giving a person what they need packaged and what they think that they want. Okay. So, for instance, there are a lot of times that I do things that are meditative based with my clients, mm -hmm. and they don't realize necessarily the reason why we're, you know, mm -hmm. I have them lying down on the floor doing... Uh, deep diaphragmic breathing, breathing, right. you know, for two minutes. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's a there's a method to the madness. So okay. did I answer your question? Yeah. So yeah, it did. works different. Whether yeah. it's a, but you know, there, like I said, a group fitness situation, you put it in there, you hope the person you know takes it on. One-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one work, like that's part of what we do. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Great. So so um, tell tell my viewers about your fitness classes you know I I've experienced <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I've experienced one um, and and I did it with with my daughters right so that's that family fitness activity Absolutely. incorporated but um, um, tell the living room viewers about your fitness classes and 
when they're scheduled and how individuals can actually come. All right, so we just started up what is called TTW, which is um, Total Transformation Workout, where we have a component and we, there are many exercises that are geared specifically toward addressing the mind, obviously the body with exercise, mm -hmm. and then um, spirit, soul, emotional life, however you like to word it, right. same thing, right? Um, the exercises can look different. They're all things that I'm able to do, you know, because the classes are on Saturday mm -hmm. from 12 to 1.30 okay. at Ripley Greer Studios yes. in Manhattan. Okay. Um, but I can do things in that environment because it's, it's I'm controlling the environment mm -hmm. versus a lot of the companies that I do wellness consulting for are very strict on, you know, you can talk about this, you can do this, you can't, you know, that right. kind of thing. Right. So it really just opens the doors up to possibilities as to what can be done. And the point at the end of the day is to really have fun. Right. And to, for many people who stay in their head all day, uh -huh. for you to like really experience what it's like to be out of your head. Right. And, um, and be accepting of the choice that you've made to like just be a stronger, mm -hmm. healthier version of yourself. Right, right. Well, I can say from my experience, I was out of my head. <laughs> you. Well, look, you like you having fun. Yeah. I had you having and you. And I <laughs> enjoyed myself. I can't, and my girls enjoyed themselves. One said, yeah, I'm coming back. The other one said, oh, I can't hang. <laughs> but um, overall, yeah, it, it was a really, really great Really great experience. I, I enjoyed it. Support. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be back next Saturday. I'm ready for I don't know if it'll be a family it. activity again, you know. Uh, but, look, it's I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll be there. I'll be awesome. There. Yeah, so um, I'd like to thank you thank for you. coming to the living room and sitting on my couch and sharing advice on um, wellness, health, fitness. And um, this was great because it really allowed me to look at uh, health and well-being in a different way, you know, outside of my head of what I originally looked at health and well-being. You know, I always just looked at it as, oh, I'm working out. But I never really um, incorporated or even thought about the importance of spiritual and mental health and well-being incorporated into a fitness workout to really reach my full potential. Awesome. Right. Well, look, that's the point. And thank you for that feedback because that's that's what I like to hear. Yes, absolutely. Possibilities. Yes, possibilities. All right, man. Look, anytime you're ready to have me back. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. episode of The Living Room is sponsored by Kim and Nicole Naturals. Kim and Nicole Naturals is a home-based hair care product distributor and I'd like to say her products are amazing. Mm -hmm.